But when I look at the, the media reporting from the scene and what the government says, I mean, I think there are some things that you can put together. The first one, it's clear. Well, look, let's be honest. If you're attacking federal property, attacking federal officers, these, these, this is violence and this is rioting and they are, these are crimes. So they're not demonstrations. They're, they're, they're criminal activity. Um, what, what caught my attention is when people are bringing things to the scene of the crime, like leaf blowers, dispersed gas, metal spikes to put in tires, frozen water bottles to throw at people, commercial fireworks to shoot at them, lasers to blind them, um, Molotov cocktails, other things are important. These are conscious acts. Somebody has to think to do that. And they're offensive tools. They're not the kinds of things we see from demonstrators who are worried about peacefully demonstrating or, or being a, a, a dispersed crowd. They're things that, are, that people would bring only if they have an intention to do harm and do offensive activities. So that raises the question is, we know it's a crime. We know that there's a certain premeditation to the crime because people are bringing these accoutrements with them to do criminal acts. That suggests that you have to ask the question is, is there organization behind this? And why you ask that question is because if people are conspiring together to conduct a criminal activity, that is organized, organized crime. And the criminal conspiracy itself is a crime. And if it's a criminal conspiracy that's crossing federal lines, it yet brings another reason for the federal to government get involved. And when we say cross federal lines, that could be everything from people coming from out of the state to participate in riots and violent acts in Portland, people sending money, even people communicating guidance and instructions, which facilitate the criminal activity. I organize criminal activity that's designed to intimidate government officials, local, state, and federal, to injure law enforcement officers and to destroy public property. I think that's a very, very serious matter. And just dismissing this as protests and dismissing the federal intervention as, well, they, you know, they just got what they asked for. They've created the situation. I mean, these, I think, are, are untenable excuses. One of the things, uh, there's a pattern that's developed here. There are peaceful demonstrations and protests up until a certain moment on the clock at which things seem to change rather dramatically. And uh, it's a pattern that's predictable that we see. The uh, feds are provoked with threats to the, the fencing and the facilities and so on. They are forced essentially to come out to protect the facilities. And then they are blamed for uh, being uh, provocateurs of those who have come prepared to uh, deface property and to destroy. So it's a rather interesting thing. And even among the peaceful protesters, and there are plenty of them here in the Portland area, are unwilling to call out the violent arm, which, as I appreciate you put it, criminals have hijacked legitimate demonstrations, transforming them into lawless, violent mobs that deny citizens equal protection under the law. There's an unwillingness, even on the part of those who are there, uh, well-intentioned and their peaceful protesters, to call out those who hijack their attention. There's an unwillingness on the part of the mayor and other city officials to call out those, and the numbers are much smaller than the larger gatherings, who are perpetrating this kind of activity. I, I don't get it, and I think many residents in Portland are very, very frustrated by it. Well, this actually is additional evidence that suggests this is organized criminal activity, because what we see is it is changing and evolving and a, a, adapting. So, for example, you point out that the criminal activity occurs after the protests, right? That's an intentional, appears to be an intentional act to, to give cover for the violence by saying, well, it's connected to the protest. You know, for a while, we saw you know, mass protests. I think nobody, pro nobody had a problem with that. That's what Americans do. Right. But then we saw, for example, people going after statues all over the country. And what happened was the federal government came in with a task force, they, and they started to prosecute those people. And that activity very much quieted down and went away. We still have people taking on statues, but it's government officials taking on statues. It's not mobs anymore. So then, then the tactic shifted to, instead of tearing down statues of Christopher Columbus or defacing them, it shifted to attacking federal buildings. The other thing that is interesting is where have they gone? They've gone to cities where there's a permissive environment, where the state and local officials have, have not used state and local law enforcement in a cooperative manner to bring peace to the streets. So they're, they're consciously going to places where there's weakness. We don't see this in cities all over the country. We see these 
in cities where, for whatever reason, local officials are not preventing that. And then we see them evolve tactics over over time. So they go out one night and then they come back another night with a different set of weapons, a different set of excuses, a different set of people wearing a different set of jerseys. One night we show up flags, we're all patriots. One night we show up, we're all veterans. One night we show up, we're all moms. This, again, suggests organization and and organized criminal conspiracies are an incredibly serious crime and they cannot just be dismissed as legitimate protests and they cannot be defended in any way, shape or form that this is about addressing racial injustice or, or any other ill. This is about intimidation and the use of violence for intimidation to achieve political ends. This is organized criminal activity, which ought to be beyond the pale for any American politician should be condemning this. I mean, you could, you could like kneeling and anything to your, you know, to your heart's content, but no American government official or member of any legislature at any level ought to stay up and say, organized criminal activity is okay. Yeah, as long as we agree with your ideology that that motivates it. Uh, I'm hearing increasingly within the black community here, and it's relatively small in Oregon, a f- growing frustration that this uh, this movement has been hijacked. The legitimate demonstrations that began have been hijacked for other purposes. And uh, it, that growing frustration, I think, demonstrates and, and the way blacks who are uh, standing in opposition, some federal agents, some not, police officers and so on, um, hearing the N-word and, and people in their face uh, demonstrate that this really is much less about Black Lives Matter, if it is at all, than it is other things. Um, one of the things you point out in your uh, your column is that uh, Homeland Security and the several agencies within that department have law enforcement authority that possessed uh, that they possessed long before there was ever a, a, a DHS. That the what authority they're using now was not created by the uh, uh, Trump administration. This is authority they have had and they've exercised in the past. So there are about 40 federal law enforcement agencies. Uh, you know, EPA has a police force. The FBI has its own police force. The Secret Service, Service has its own police force. So there's about 40 federal agencies that have law enforcement authorities of one kind or another. The Coast Guard, for example, is actually a uniform military service and is an official law enforcement agent. You see, it has both those. And they're called, you know, titled or authorities under U.S. Code. So they're they're passed in law by the Congress. Congress basically declares that this agency is a law enforcement agency and establishes its jurisdiction. And then that's solidified in code. Now, if you look at the Department of Homeland Security, every organization that's in the Department of Homeland Security exhibited for 9-11. All the bill did was take what, what's now Customs and Border Patrol and, um, and, and ICE. All those authorities, all those legal guys were there. It just put them into one agency. So it didn't create any new authority. And indeed, the idea of creating them all under DHS is because we wanted them all to work together. As a matter of fact, this is something, again, the federal government has been doing forever. If you go back to the 30s, you know, in fighting Al Capone in Chicago, the federal government takes the law enforcement authorities of different organizations, and not just federal, often state and local government, and it brings them together in a task force to more effectively combat crime. So, for example, we have joint terrorism task force all over the country. They have federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies in there, and they work together using their different legal authorities to combat terrorism. Um, so this isn't, this isn't new, and, it, and, and it's, it's actually why we created the department, so we could leverage our law enforcement resources in support of uh, uh, the equal, equal protection under the law for all Americans. And federal law enforcement agency means exactly that. A federal agent has national jurisdiction. He is enforcing federal law all over the country. Just the same reason you could send an FBI agent into the South in the 1960s to fight the Klan and bomb churches and burning crosses is because those people were violating federal laws and the FBI had the, the authority and jurisdiction to go into those cities and states, even if the local law enforcement was not cooperating with them, to enforce the law. That's exactly the same principle that is being exercised here. And the notion that somehow the intervention of federal law enforcement created the violence we know it's simply not true, but you guys have had rioting for many, many weeks before, before. DHS showed up. Yeah, let me just and ask you because very, very. Yeah, no, it's what's very, very clear is the violence is targeting going after the federal agents so that they can claim it's the federal agents' fault. So, in addition to everything else in this organized criminal conspiracy, in addition to the logistics and the money and the training and everything else, is they're running their own propaganda machine to attack the U.S. government. 